It's the Rock Man. I'll be your hashtag three lifts competition announcer for the evening. Lockdown has changed the way people are being forced to train. See it cross platform in real life. And I know this this must be a new observation. That's why I'm putting it out there. <laughs> but I do know this for certain. True warriors of iron cannot be restrained from getting them gains. Jesse Wysong and his benchmark bench press. 335. I feel like this is a good one to start with because Jesse is an elite level bench press specialist. Let's not fucking forget. 153 pounds soaking wet. This barbell weighs more than he does. <laughs> yeah, dude looks like he lifts all right. His body fat percentage is bottomed out, you know? Just a show of hands here. How many guys can even get into this weight class, much less be competitive in this weight class? Yeah, no, I didn't think so. So the 155-pound curl is crazy, man. Uh, it's the heaviest one that I've seen, and I know a couple guys have been training the curl because it's a contestable lift, minimal equipment. Uh, it's the heaviest one I've seen so far. And pretty damn impressive, but not quite as impressive as 475 pounds. Dylan McConnell is a bench press technician. I don't give a shit what you've got to say about the kid getting loose and banging his breastbone. Look, he finds the groove and locks the shit out. And he said he felt like his ass came off the bench. And yeah, it definitely moves, but I don't see no fucking daylight. 475 pounds is a truckload of weight. Sick, man. West Side Boy, I have noticed as the weeks drag on, this room looks more and more like a home gym. <laughs> Just giving it up. Fuck the gym. I don't need the fucking gym. 395 pounds plus the average bands. Stiff back. Deadlift. For those of you who can't comprehend just how difficult this would fucking be to lock out without any kind of leg drive to give the bar inertia, here's a 500 pound straightweight version. Look how fucking easy it is for him to lock out. The hardest part was off the ground. You can't tell me this dude couldn't walk up to 600 pounds right now and fucking pull it. Impossible. Floor press, 325 pounds. Said it was an inch off his chest. Looked a little tiny bit closer to me, but fuck do I know, right? Crazy close grip. Didn't get grindy at all, man. Um, if he's not 350 chasing down 365, I would be kind of surprised. Legendary Dr. Rackpole. I'm going to spend more time on the doc than I typically would because he's ma been making crazy progress and he's... The only one of you fuckers who put together a compilation video. <laughs> Not impacted by the lockdown whatsoever. In fact, efforts redoubled. The man is focused, not being able to go to the pub. Uh, <laughs> that was his 190 kilo squat. He shows the five kilo plates on the side. And we do appreciate it because it can be kind of hard to tell, and all of these numbers are super competitive. Just out of nowhere, dude's bench press is shooting up. 145 kilos. Very solid. There is no critical analysis to be made of that bench press. The deadlift, however, <laughs> look at the man's face, right? I did this to myself. <laughs> Oh, he's got to tie his hands to it. And we haven't seen anything over, or we haven't even seen five plates from the dock. And then he came out of nowhere with this one. It's like, no more baby weights. God damn it. If I'm going to tie my hands to the bar, this son of a bitch is getting lifted off the ground. <laughs> Fully committed. He clears the knee, but oh shit, not quite. And if he's going to hitch it, might as well make it a triple hitch. Lock that son of a bitch out. Let there be no question. <laughs> Mad respect, Doc. I think uh, 520 in pounds. Um, but 
just to do an analysis of the squat. I know nobody was shitting on his form, but this is 180 kilos, his first squat. And what did he say about this weight? If we look at the position of the bar versus the notches in the safety catch, we see it's about halfway down that second hole. Yeah. He said he wanted to go a little bit deeper with his next one. What happened with his next one? 185. He went a little bit deeper. And I would argue that the position on this one is still not there. It's a work in progress. He's chasing those small goals. He's putting in consistent training. And wow, wouldn't you know it? He's fucking achieving his goals. Because on the 190 pound, when you look at it at the bottom, in motion it's different, but when you look at it at the bottom, I have no problem saying that this is fucking parallel. And that's because his position looks improved. I would say that his hips actually are lower. If you look at the bar position, it's the lowest squat out of all three. It's in a better position to press it. That puts him in a better position for depth. They were all in a training range, but I don't think there could be any question of depth on this one, even from this angle. And it helps that he used the same angle for all the heavy singles in this cycle. Then just not even a week after he released that video, he had to come out and press 150 kilos. Oh, man. I'm hesitant to call it a quick pause. I want to say that it's a competition pause. So let's go ahead and compare it to Jesse Wysong, who locked it out faster, definitely had a faster pause. And the doc lets it rest on his chest basically all day in comparison. So that is a strong 330-pound bench. And I'm not trying to pick on Jesse. I just feel like this is a good one to measure um, this particular lift against since it's not his best lift and he is such on such an elite level. Um, that kind of makes it more fair because <laughs> he's wounded, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah. You can see the side to side, the way that the bar tilts a little bit, but Doc is just rock solid on the bench. See how he does against West Side Boy with 325. Ooh, damn. Now, I know it's not a bench press, but you could argue that the floor press is a Larson press. Look at that close grip on that shit. Does it look challenging, though? Man, makes it look easy. That's why I say 350 chasing down 365. And this dude's young as hell, so his ability to grind is off the chart. Whereas you won't see me grinding too much because I just turned 38 on Tuesday. I saved my bench press PR for Friday so I'd have as much time as possible to mentally prepare myself for it. Because I had to peak for this lift. And it was either today or not at all. Well, I had some trouble getting it out of the rack. And then when I touched my chest, whoa, the block pushed a little higher. I didn't intend to pause it, but... That was that split second of hesitation where I thought about leaving it where it was, and it's like, right, I've got to lift it because there is no tomorrow on this one. You know what I'm saying? It would be weeks from now. So that's about as grindy as you'll ever see me get. i got to compare it here to the only other four-plate bench press I've seen in a little while. That's not Dylan McConnell's. GLA. I don't know if you guys have noticed, this is the only lift that remains on his channel. He totally nuked the shit. You've got theories on it. I'd like to hear them in the comments section, but I don't have time to dedicate a whole video to it. Speaking of videos, I don't have time to make. Brother Grimm will be included in this, so I don't have to make him his own video, even though he has been so nice in petitioning me to go ahead and do that. <laughs> I made a hateful ass comment because I'm a fucking asshole on one of his videos because he posts so much fucking off the wall, like totally strung out shit that's happening to him. And I got to be honest, even in the video response that you made to me, the last two minutes of it, I've watched it five times. I can't fucking tell what you're saying, bro. Um, this was the transformation that I was referencing from, hey, this dude looks like he can rep 275 
for a set of 10 to methed out Scarecrow. And I thought that what you had said originally was this was a totally drug free transformation. All of these transformations were totally drug free. Uh, so my comment was misinformed. Because what I meant was if you expect me to believe recreational drugs played no part whatsoever in this fucking transformation, you can kiss my ass. Whatever goals you set for yourself that help you gravitate away from whatever led to this, you should set. But December for 10 reps of three wheels is setting yourself up for failure just based on your current level of strength, estimating your body weight, and how much contractile tissue you would have to gain by Christmas to make it happen, it's not physiologically possible. You say, oh, if you went on steroids. Yeah, again, man, um, the shit can't accelerate the process, but it's not fucking magic powers, especially not for somebody smoking break time cigarettes and fucking still chugging beers. So this dude is in Jesse Wysong's weight class, and <laughs> that's about as good as I would look if I tried to get down to 150, I'll tell you that. If you haven't seen my compilation video for March, April, it's on the channel. I appreciate all you guys that have been uploading your training progress. It helps to keep me motivated. I think that's what it's all about, right? Even though my goals haven't been as strength-oriented as I would like in the last few months, um, it helps me remain accountable that I have to upload some of these training logs. Otherwise, I might skip it a little bit more, you know? So I appreciate it. Keep training strong. Thanks for watching.